Hi everyone. This is Deb Tim and welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you how my new additions are doing in my paired fish aquarium. Now I did add six new little paired fish and they're just adorable and they look beautiful in the tank. And I also added six other fish which you'll have to watch to find out what they are. So please stay tuned. You may recognize this aquarium as my 125 gallon. I have specifically dedicated this aquarium to my love for the blood red parrotfish. Keep in mind, these are the freshwater variety. I have 16 parrotfish living comfortably in this aquarium. I was out fish shopping a couple weeks ago with Hubby and picked up six more small parrotfish to go with the existing ten. The parrots I chose are very small. They are all around two inches. Their coloration is extraordinarily dark orange. When buying parrotfish, you can get them in many different sizes. They did have larger ones, although not quite as large as my big boys. Of course, when you go big, you also end up spending more money. My preference is to purchase fish at the juvenile stage. I do this for a couple reasons. One is they are cheaper, but you have so much time to watch them learn and to watch them develop their personalities and, of course, see them grow and come into their coloration all while under your care. Now, that's a pretty cool privilege. Periodically, you may see my two cuckoo catfish zipping around. They're another amusing fish to watch. Now, if you want these, it's vital that you get at least two because they are social and do much better when they have a friend. These two have been together now for over five years and are inseparable. There's also a single cichlid fry that you may see swimming around. I raise some of my cichlid fry as feeders for my larger fish. Well, once in a while, one will beat the odds and survive. So the one in here is the only one who has survived capture of the initial 25 to 30 that I put in this tank. I have a feeling luck is on his side, so we'll call him Lucky. You may have noticed that once again I've changed my scape. I removed the rock cave structures and added the driftwood. The catfish usually hide in the end of the driftwood as it's hollow from the right side to about midway. They are well acquainted with this piece of driftwood as it's been in their tank before. Have you noticed that wherever I move along the tank, my parrotfish follow me? They truly are funny fish. They are like little water puppies. Just look how they eagerly follow me. Hubby says they're hungry, but I think they love me so much they want to be near me. Sometimes if I'm trying to shoot something in the background, their curiosity can be a pain. They will totally block out what I'm trying to capture. Of course, they don't think there's anything that compares to their beauty. They just don't get that there might be something else in the tank I want to look at. So now I'm looking at the other end of the tank. And we'll see how quickly they get down here. They are truly silly orange puppies. Even the new little ones have joined the horde and follow along. I'm not sure if they are just being little copycats, but they sure know the drill. With their endearing personalities, their curiosity, they are always so entertaining to watch. I laugh when I ask my kids if they want to take the fish for a walk. We all know what that means, and we laugh about it, because really... Who walks fish? There's the little cichlid I was talking about. He's actually showing some great color and he's only about an inch in size. Once he's a little bigger, he will join the 75 gallon African cichlid tank. He's still a good edible size, so he's not out of the woods yet. 
I am sorry we haven't seen more of the new clown loaches. I am so excited to share them with you, but being fairly new to this setup, they're spending a lot of their time hiding. If you know anything about clown loaches, you will know that they are magical fish able to completely disappear. They have a need for tight spaces. It's important to provide them with a good tight space that they can squeeze themselves into for comfort. If you don't provide them with something suitable, believe me, they will find something you may not want them to climb into. It's best to give them something you approve of. I find the pipes are perfect. Even the catfish like them. It's early in the morning and a good time to catch the clowns out of their tubes. They are a good size, being nice and thick. That's a good indication of health. A clown loach should typically be very similar in width from head to tail. They are a thick-bodied fish. If their heads are looking significantly wider than their body, then they are too thin and sickly and need to be fed more. They do well on high-protein foods, although a good mix is encouraged as they do like decaying plant matter, veggie wafers, along with worms, frozen foods, and other proteins. One of their favorite treats are snails. Clown loaches are such a cool, fun fish. I'm sorry that I haven't gotten better footage, but I will work on that. When I turned the lights on, they pretty quickly scooted back into their tubes. They are a good fit for most aquariums as long as they're not put in with highly aggressive fish. They're not a solitary fish and will not survive alone. They need friends. You must plan on getting a group of four to six so that they can flourish and be happy. So until my next video, I will work hard on getting some footage of my six new clowns. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I wish you a wonderful day tomorrow and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.